you think I should preface this by saying I have COVID in this entire video. This video is just not right. It's fine, but there's something wrong. Oh, maybe I'll buy a pair of Dicky 874s, but I better do my due diligence and see if they're worth it. I'll just type it into YouTube. Whoops, there's an Iron Snail video. I better watch that one. Here it is, everyone. Welcome to the Dicky 874 video. I also have COVID. <laughs> I feel like when I don't make a video and I'm supposed to, there's like a little bug just on my leg crawling up slowly and I can feel the bug on my leg all the time. And I'm, when I'm asking the bug, are you going to attack me? It's like, what? No. So anyways, this video doesn't count because one, I have COVID, I feel horrible. And two, all of my equipment's in Switzerland and I'm not. So this is why the video looks at, well, it's not in Switzerland anymore. Now it's back in New Jersey, but I don't have it yet. Whatever, you don't care. So Dickie 874 is possibly the most fascinating pants from a technical level ever to be invented because they were the first to do something and that is it be imperative that they are a blend. They can't be just 100% cotton, they can't be 100% polyester, they have to be a blend because of a certain feature that Dickies gives to their pants but then well, this in 1967 is when they started doing this and then recently they flipped their blend so now it's way more polyester than cotton which isn't good and not necessary and makes the pants way worse but we'll get into that later because there is a solution and it involves buying a different pair of pants, which I'll tell you about. Also, this video is sponsored by Huckberry, specifically the Proof 72 Hour Merino t-shirt, and we'll talk about why it's a shirt that I wear every single time I go for a run, which is like almost every day. So, I love it. Okay, part one, fit. How do these pants fit? You may be saying, Michael, well, they fit well if you get the correct size. I did not get the correct size for these pants. I actually got two sizes up because I really wanted kind of bigger straight fitting pants. I kind of like the look. I suggest you stick to the size because they just fit better. But I went, I'm usually a size 20, well, actually I went three sizes up now. I'm usually a size 29. I went with a 32. They're generally a straight fit. There's a very, very relaxed taper, but it's so relaxed that you basically can't see it. So size according to your size, like you've done since you were a tiny baby and they should fit well. The weird thing about Dickies is that we all kind of know Carhartt as that workwear brand that got really popular and everybody loved and then all of a sudden Carhartt Whip was invented or I guess the license for Carhartt products was bought by a European company who then made it more stylish and then that was that. And Carhartt is still very trendy around a lot of people but there's a different market which is the Dickies market and Dickies are less expensive than Carhartt. So if you're getting a pair of Carhartt pants they're like $50, Dickie 874s are like $30. There are some concessions in quality which really don't matter if you just want these for fashion pants. I don't know if they matter for, you know, heavy workwear jobs because I don't have a heavy workwear job, but I assume it would. The biggest difference right away that you'll see is Carhartt uses triple stitching along their seams or along a lot of their seams, which basically makes the stitching so tough on Carhartts that the fabric will fail before the stitching. And it's very, very difficult to get Carhartt fabric to fail. So all in all, it's just saying they're very, very tough pants. Carhartt also uses a flat lock stitch. What I meant to say was Carhartt uses a flat filled seam, which is much stronger than what Dickies does to keep their pants together. I don't assume it will be a big problem, and I bet you a lot of people don't actually ever see this problem come to fruition, but it's just not nearly as strong as what Carhartt is doing. And also the material, which we will get into, which is the most important part of this video, is different. Carhartt typically sticks with 100% cotton, which means it's missing one detail that Dickies has, but that's usually the fabric breathes better. It doesn't pill, which Dickies do a lot. These ones are full of pilling. Thinking. Hello. We in my car. Dickie 874s are made of twill. Just like denim, they're made out of an eight and a half ounce twill, which if you know denim weights, denim is typically around 12 to 14 ounces. So these are lighter than denim jeans, but you wouldn't be able to feel it because one, it could be the blend, which I said is cotton and polyester, which prevents wrinkling. That's the polyester's job in that blend or one of polyester's jobs. But then the fascinating thing, as I was saying before, is 
what comes with dickies is a permanent pleat. Okay, so like I said, this video is sponsored by Huckberry, and the reason I wear the Proof 72 Hour Merino tee whenever I run is actually because wool is a really good performance fabric. So this shirt is made of 87% merino wool, 13% nylon. The nylon is just there, so that way when you wash the actual shirt itself, it doesn't lose shape and it's a little tougher anyways. But what's great about merino is that it's antibacterial, odor resistant, and it wicks away moisture. So it's really good if you're going on a run or something like that. Typically when I was wearing a cotton shirt, one run, shirt was done. Usually with this now, I'll wear it three, four times, five times if I'm feeling lazy, but it's advertised as a 72 hour t-shirt because you can wear it for three days in a row without it getting stinky. A lot of people also wear it if they're traveling, if they're going on a hike, if they're camping or anything like that, just because you can technically bring less shirts than you normally would. So if you get stinky quickie, then check out Hucky Berry. Uh, oh, and use my link. You have to use my link. You can wash these dickies as many times as you want and they don't wrinkle, but for some reason, there is a very important wrinkle always there, and that would be the little pleat on the pants. So how does it get there? There's a lot of ways to get a permanent pleat on pants, which is very important. We'll get into that after. What dickies does, or did, and still does, I believe, they just melt part of the pants and it stays like that forever. So that's why the polyester cotton blend is so important. If you've ever ironed anything, which I have considering I am the iron, when you're clicking the little wheel on the iron, you could set something to polyester if you're ironing polyester, which is very, very low temperature, or like cotton, linen, stuff like that, which is a much higher temperature. So what I think Dickies does is they get the pants and they fold them however they want or whatever, and then where they press with an iron or whatever it is on a more industrial level, they melt essentially that part of the polyester and not the cotton so now the polyester fabric is always kind of shaped like the shape of that pleat because it's just melted plastic in that shape instead of the more free-flowing polyester fibers that we use for fabric and originally when dickies did this with the 65 percent cotton blend it was fine, but since they have to keep up with that comparatively very low price point of $30, they had to cut some costs, and the first thing to go was like 30% of the cotton. I got all this stuff for the camera back, so we're back. We're good, here we're, we're here with good. Not having my gear feels like a little bug crawling. So, the problem with that blend, besides it just, well, no, that's really the, the big problem. Ooh, yuck, yucky. The problem with that blend is that pilling occurs. To be honest, it's kind of hard to find out the exact reason for pilling, but from what I can find, pilling occurs when there's an imbalance in strength between two materials and a blend. And that would be that polyester is stronger than cotton. So when a cotton thread snaps, normally on a lot of pairs of pants, it's not an issue because it's all cotton. But since this is a blend, the polyester does not snap. And then that cotton basically spins and wraps around the polyester and you get pills and these pants pill like crazy and it also looks like they kind of fade to like this chalky color obviously you can get a pill machine and take them all off but i figured i would keep mine on just to show you uh, that is i feel like that is the number one sign of a low quality garment so pilling isn't really something that i like that much and i don't think vintage dickies did if you can find vintage dickies and it's 65 percent cotton 35 percent polyester you'll probably be good and i was actually going to suggest that you get vintage dickies instead of modern ones and find them from the 70s and stuff but i really can't find any so if you find some those are probably good but if you can't you'll probably have to get an alternative if you want the highest quality pants without pilling. This is when I think my fever was coming back, so all of a sudden I started calling Dickies Dockers. Obviously, we know what they are. Okay, but if you want something that looks like Docker 874s, but they're a little higher quality, they're no polyester or something like that, here's what you need. You can break it up. First thing you want is a twill weave pants, which is chinos, jeans, obviously, something like that, and very, very lightweight. So probably not jeans, because these chinos, or the Dockers, for example, are eight and a half ounces. So you want a twill weave, lightweight, some polyester content actually would not be that bad if it was like less than 35% or 35%, just because it'll give it that non-wrinkled look easier. But also you can do this with 100% cotton. You just might have to keep it ironed a bit more. And then the other thing that you want is a permanent pleat, which here's the thing. You could go Stan Ray, you can go Levi's Chinos, Taylor Stitch Boss Duck is phenomenal, I have that. Or you can just go Carhartt Work Pants in general and you can get a permanent pleat added in and I think there's a bunch of different ways to do that. The one that I saw that was pretty popular is they would add silicone, like a little silicone line 
to the inside of the pants and it holds the pleat perfect and it's heat resistant and water resistant and everything like that. So you can do that and essentially turn a pair of Carhartts into a better pair of Dickies. It just, it might look a little weird because usually Carhartts are made out of duck fabric, which is a plain weave, twill is different. So I guess I'm going against what I said. But anyways, you can get work pants that have a nice drape to them and add the pleat in yourself and get higher quality pants with that same look. I wish Dickies made a higher quality version of the 874s. I was surprised to see that they didn't. But if they did that, that would be really cool. Even if it was just 65% cotton, they switched it back to how it was. Well, that's the end of the video.